Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about five reasons, five reasons why relying on refis is business suicide and what to do instead. Now, we all know that we're in a rising interest rate environment. We all know that it's not only low inventory, but we're seeing rates increase. And so obviously relying on refis puts you in a very precarious position, but there's a lot of other reasons why you don't want to be relying heavily on refis. When I say relying heavily on refis, if you're relying more than 40% of your business on refis, you're sitting on a one-legged or a two-legged stool. It puts you in a very precarious position and it gets you in a spot where as soon as rates go up a few more notches, you're losing a significant amount of your business. But it's not just that. There's a whole lot more. I was talking with a client just earlier today, and this guy has 95% of his business refis in a rising interest rate environment. And there's a lot of consequence in that. He's stressed out. He's anxious. He's worried about the future. His revenue is drying up. And there's a lot of you know, worry about what's going to happen next. How many more notches of interest rate increases are going to be necessary for his business to go through the floor entirely? Those are the kind of questions he's been worrying about and for good reason because he's sitting on a one-legged stool with 95% refis. Don't let that be you. And so if you're watching this or listening to this, you want to make sure you're positioning yourself to hedge against this. But before we talk about how to do that, let's talk about the five reasons why you relying too much on refis is business suicide, is revenue suicide. The first reason is obviously when rates go up, when rates rise like they are now, refi revenue dries up, re re refi revenue goes down. So it puts you in a precarious position as we already know, where you know if you're relying 70, 80, 90% on refis and rates go up a few more notches, all of a sudden your pipe line tanks, your business tanks, and now you're scrambling to try and recoup that lost revenue. That is not smart business. That's building your house on quicksand, not on solid rock. And it puts you in a position where you're constantly worrying what's going on with the market, what's going on with rates. You don't have a solid business. You have a practice that's relying on the perfect weather conditions in order to be able to have fair sailing. That's not how you want to have your business. You want to have a barge. You want to have a little literal barge that allows you to handle any waves, any storms, anything that comes your way. You are least and last affected by those market downturns versus first and most. The question is, how do you do that? We're going to get into that in a moment. But that's the very first and perhaps most important reason why you don't want to rely too heavily on refis. You want to hedge against the rising interest rate environment. We already see all the inflationary singles signals in the news, it's all over the news. We already see the writing on the wall. It's not a matter of if rates are going to go up. It's a matter of when. And you don't want to be first and most affected. You want to be least and last. You want to have a solid, multi-pronged, multi-pillared revenue stream business that allows you to weather any storm, to sleep well every night, knowing your revenue is locked in and that your business is only up and to the right. You don't have to worry about what's going on with the economy or the rates because business just keeps flowing in. And how do you do that, Dorn? How do you do that? Well, you get yourself in the purchase market. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But the thing that's cool about the purchase market is that it is a business flow, a business source that people are always gonna be involved in. Because regardless of what's going on with rates of the economy, people are gonna keep getting into the market, moving up in the market. People are gonna keep getting married, keep getting divorced and, and continue to die. And all of those transactions require, or rather all those events require transactions. So that puts you in a position to prosper in any market, in any interest rate environment. And there's obviously some needles we need to thread to be able to do that effectively. And to be able to do that without messing around doing it the hard way, we'll talk about that in a moment. But refis are only fair weather sailing type of scenarios. You're not able to do it in any market. You're not able to do it in any economy. You're not able to do it in any type of interest rate level. And so that's why it's mission critical you guys start to shift into the purchase market. But let's talk about some other reasons why relying too heavily on refis is business suicide. The second reason is 
refis are less fun. Let's get real. Purchase business way, is way more fun. When somebody just gets into a, their house, it's their dream home. You help them get into a house, the glory of and pride of home ownership, and you help them do that, and they didn't think they were going to be able to do that. And now they get to step into this beautiful home. They get to experience the glory of that dream realized. There's some juice, right? There's some gratitude. There's some excitement, and that spills off into you feeling like you made a difference in someone's life. Yeah, it's cool to save people money. Yeah, it's cool to save people a few bucks, but getting people into their dream home, helping them acquire a property, revenue property, or their own dream home, that's at a whole other level of excitement. Would you not agree? And so refis are just less fun. They're more mechanical. You can basically, you basically turn into a mortgage monkey at the desk, just doing paperwork and slamming out loans. Or if you're delegating to someone else, that's cool. All the processing is done, but there's not as much juice, as much excitement around it getting done because the clients just save a few bucks. It's not really that consequential. It's not a life changer like it is getting someone into their own home. Would you not agree? So that's the second reason why you don't want to rely too much on refis. It's just not as much fun. And let's be real. Life is too short not to you know, have much fun. Life is too short to leave fun on the table, if you ask me. The third reason why you don't want to rely too much on refis is refis are less lucrative. They are. If you compare your average commission per deal on a purchase deal versus a refi deal, hands down, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to make more money on the purchase deal than you are on a refi deal. True or not true? So you make more money because it's a bigger transaction size. So your average commission per deal is much higher on the purchase side than it is on the refi side. Sure, if it's crazy low rates, we'll take it. If we have the opportunity to claim some refi business, by all means, we'll take it but we don't want to rely on refis. Refis are just gravy. Refis are the cherry on top. We don't want to have our foundation of our business on a soggy ground. We don't want it on quicksand. We want a rock solid purchase business foundation and then refis are just gravy, right? So refis are less lucrative because the average volume per deal is less than on the purchase side. Now, that's not it. We also want to talk about the fact that refis generate less referrals. Think about it. If you do 10 refi deals versus 10 purchase deals and the 10 refi deals, you save them some money. That's cool. But they are less likely, much less likely to go out there and talk to friends and family about the fact that they saved a few bucks on their refi versus the fact they got into their own home, right? There's that energy that they have when they get into their home and you help them do that the thrill of buying their dream home and you help them do that, man, oh man, are they ever ecstatic. Man, they can't stop talking, right? And so naturally there's more impetus, more inspiration to refer you on a purchase deal than there is on a refi deal. So now you have this beautiful chain reaction where deals beget more deals beget more deals. Why? Because they're jacked and stacked. You are the catalyst, the conduit of contribution that helped them make that happen and now they're sharing the love and sharing your expertise with their friends and their family. How cool is that? So then it creates that endless chain of awesome. Referral, be getting more referrals, be getting more referrals. So that's really cool too. And that's not available on the refi side as much as you probably have noticed. Now, the fifth reason why refis and relying too much on refis is business suicide, revenue suicide, is refis are not recession proof. We've already talked about that. So as soon as rates go up a few notches, there goes your refi revenue. And again, you're building your house on quicksand instead of, instead of solid ground. And so, you know, realtors and mortgage professionals alike, they're constantly being thrown to and fro by the winds of the economy, whether it be the interest rates, whether it be, you know, how much inventory there is. There's all these winds that are galing against the proverbial boats. And what you want to do is set up your business, so you have like a military, you know, a barge or a military, you know, freight freight ship, if you will, that allows you to weather any storm at any time in any economy. The question is, how do you do that? How do you set up a recession-proof business that allows you to have peace of mind no matter what's going on in the economy? That has your business continue to grow month after month, year after year. How do you do it in a way that's fun? that allows you to have more fun, more flow, more fulfillment, and work less. You know, I see so many people that work in 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. 
That's doing it the hard way. That's being a guinea pig on the guinea pig wheel. Something tells me to get in this business. You didn't get in this business to work your ass off, working longer and harder. Even if you're making great money, who cares if you're not enjoying it, right? It's like, sure, I'm making great money, but I'm not having much fun. I'm burnt out. I'm flabby around the waist because I'm not exercising. I'm not taking care of myself. I'm super stressed out. I'm having a hard time sleeping. Like who the frick cares how much money you have if you're not enjoying yourself, right? So it's about having maximum fun, maximum fulfillment, maximum flow, and building a business that gives you total certainty for your future. That's one of the biggest things I hear from mortgage professionals is their concerns, their worries, their anxiety around inconsistency. Up one month, down the next, right? Up one month, down the next. Inconsistency per year. Up one year, down the next. Up one year, down the next. Inconsistency in their cash flow, inconsistency in their ability to plan for the future, inconsistency in growth. Sometimes they're growing, then they're flatlining, then they're stagnating, then they're regressing. It's like they have no control over the consistent growth. And that is really the biggest complaint I hear from mortgage professionals is how do I grow consistently? Well, I'm about to tell you how you grow consistently. How you grow consistently is number one, you don't rely too much on refis. You should never have more than 30% of your business on refis. You should treat it as gravy, as the cherry on top, not your mainstay, not your primary source of business. That way you can just put in the bank, put in the retirement fund, use it to buy investments, build your portfolio with it, but don't use it to you know, feed the family with. Use it for bonus freedom money, accelerate your financial freedom account money, but don't use it as your mainstay bread and butter. Now, what do you do instead? What you do instead is you get into the purchase market. Well, how do I do it that door? And how do I get into the purchase market? I don't like working with realtors. They don't give me that time of day. They just give me attitude. They're a pain in the ass. I don't want to work with realtors, Doran. What else do I do? Well, the reason why you don't like working with realtors is kind of like saying, I don't like have, having sex. It's probably because you're doing it wrong. It's not that realtors are a problem. It's that you're doing it wrong. You're doing it the hard way. So what doesn't work is getting a bunch of crap leads off the internet to try and feed these realtors a bunch of crap leads. Any smart realtor will tell you they don't need a bunch of shit leads from Facebook. That's not gonna serve them to their best life. That's not gonna serve them to working smarter versus harder. So getting a bunch of crap leads is not gonna do it. And chasing them around, calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday is not gonna do it. That's caveman style from the dark ages. That might've worked you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. It certainly doesn't work today. They're not gonna pick up the phone. If they do, they're just gonna hang up on you because they got better things to do than have a loan leech suck loans from them, right? With no value proposition. So that certainly doesn't work. And all these other, you know, methods, whether it be, you know, doing SEO on your website. Yeah, that's great, but that's like watching paint dry. You gotta wait like, you know, six months to even start to see any kind of traffic on your website. And that's, again, a one pronged approach. We need a multi pronged approach. We need to have the most amount of business from the most amount of sources. So you're building stability through diversification. If you think about it, you can go and you can get leads off Google AdWords. You can get leads from promoting your website, driving traffic to your website, doing SEO on your website. You can get leads to doing social media, doing five posts a day, all that BS. You can do, you can get leads by throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks with cold calling. All that stuff works to some degree. The question is not what works. What is the golden question, the million dollar question, the question you want to be asking yourself is what is the shortest path to the cash? What's the shortest path to the cash to get to my income goals? And I'll tell you, it is and always will be working with top producing agents who make you their exclusive. There is no faster way to get to your income goals. You think about it. Most people that work with bottom feeding, whining, simming, complaining, jelly, donut eating, low producing realtors that maybe do three to five to seven deals a year. And maybe you might get one or two or three deals a year from them, okay? I'd much rather have five to 12 top producers who do 20 transactions a year, who make me their exclusive, who will give me one, two, three deals a month, than dealing with a bunch of drama queen chumps that are doing one or two or three or seven deals a year and send me maybe one or two or three deals a year. And they're the micromanagers. They're the drama queens. They're the ones that are, you know, calling me up at nine o'clock on a Sunday night. Like, how about you? What would you prefer to have a small stable of rock stars that are cool cats that you love and adore and they love and adore you who send you all their business all the time, make you their exclusive? 
Or would you prefer a bunch of low producers and having 40 of those that send you deals once in a blue moon when they get around to it, if they ever get those clients in the door? Obviously, it's the no brainer of the year, right? The top producers, that's where it's at. The question is, how do you get them? Well, the way you get them is not by cold calling them. Yeah, you can do that if you want to do it the hard way, but it's going to take you 20 times longer with way more stress, way more grinding and way more wasted time. Not to mention the fact it just ain't fun, right? It ain't fun. It's like banging your head against the wall. That's definitely doing it the hard way. So what do you do instead? What you do instead is you have a kick-ass, massive, unique value proposition that allows you to flip the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. You have a kick-ass value proposition that allows you to be a welcome guest instead of an annoying pest. You have a kick-ass value proposition that gets them eager and open and receptive to hearing from you, to meeting with you. You, uh, you use automation and systems to send the words that work that get them hot for what you got before you even talk to them. So that way, they're pre-cooked, pre-tenderized before you talk to them so you can start booking appointments with these top producing agents like a hot knife through butter. That's what I call working smart, not just working hard. Agreed? And then from that point, you show them by virtue of the quality questions you're asking that you're there to serve them, not to loach, leech loans from them, not to a loan parasite, but to be a marketing partner, to serve them to a higher level of proficiency at growing their business, to work smarter versus harder, to plug up the holes in their marketing engine, where they're leaving money on the table, where their engine is losing steam. Because I guarantee you, even if they're top producers, I guarantee you there are points in their business where their engine is losing steam where they're not working as efficiently as it could be, whether it be in their database, whether it be in getting reviews on the internet, getting reviews on their social media channels, whether it be getting reviews on Google My Business account, whether it be turning reviews into referrals, whether it be converting leads into closings, converting buyers into pre-approvals, into closings, getting leads at their open houses, converting those leads into closings, getting a higher conversion rate at their listing presentations, getting more listing clients, all of those things, chances are there are things they're doing that are not optimized. And so the reason why mortgage professionals hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is they realize there's a shit ton they don't know when it comes to that. They realize that it's going to be a whole lot more expensive learning from their own mistakes than to learn from an expert. They realize that it's much more efficient and effective and a whole lot more fun and fruitful to have the roadmap, the blueprint, the recipe so that they don't have to step on all the landmines unnecessarily and they can just get straight to what works. So we provide a proven blueprint, a battle-tested system for helping mortgage professionals on 100% commission who are at 80 basis points or higher comp plan in the residential mortgages, be able to attract top producing agents working on their terms, not their agent's terms, their terms, and to be able to do that where the mortgage professional has the cookie. They're in the driver's seat. They hold the power position. We're flipping the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. So now you can pick and choose who you want to work with. Now you're in a power position where you can get five to 12 rock stars who make you their exclusive and they're literally chopping at the bit to want to work with you. And you can book appointments at will. You can strategically meet with them in person or you can meet with them through Zoom. It doesn't matter. You can have rock stars sending you one, two, three deals a month, and you've never met them in your entire life. They can be in another county. They can be in another municipality. They could be even another state or province or wherever you happen to be, whether it be in Canada or the US. It works if you meet those criteria. So if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm loving this idea of taking the shortest path to the cash. I'm loving this idea of condensing time frames and turning decades into days. I'm loving this idea of having just a few rock star realtors making me their exclusive versus doing it the hard way, chasing a bunch of crap leads off the internet or doing it the hard way, cold calling the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday. That's not what I'm into. I'm into, let's take the shortest path to the cash. I love the way you think, Dorn. The question is, how does this work? If that's you and you're, defiantly committed to adding at least an extra $100,000 plus to your annual income while working smarter, not harder. You're ready to have more fun, more flow, more fulfillment. You're ready to ignite your business and take it to the next level. Then what I invite you to do is take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call 
where we'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, I'll show you what that looks like. But if not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, though, you leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We're just going to have a real honest conversation about where you're at and where you want to be. We're going to have an honest conversation about the consequence if you continue doing it the hard way and what it's really going to take to help you go stratospheric and make more money in one month than you used to make in two, three, four, five, six months. And if you're ready for that and you're ready to go stratospheric, you're ready to take things to that next level, working smarter, not harder, book a call mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Well, that's all we got for today, friends. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about the five big reasons why relying too heavily on refis is business suicide, revenue suicide, and what to do instead. So again, it ain't enough just to hear about the stuff. It ain't enough just to talk about the stuff. You got to walk this stuff. The biggest gap gap in life is the gap between there that you know the place that the, the stuff that you know and the stuff that you do. The biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. So if you're listening to this, you're like, Dorn, I want to be walking about it, not just talking about it. Book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. We'll talk to you soon, guys, on the next episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Peace, y'all.